I still have a lot of drive, but I'm really focused on making sure that we're all leading in the same path. Just making sure that I'm there for everyone. If they need a shoulder to talk to, uh, be more of a leader, that's what I'm really focused on. Maybe about a week ago, we were going to watch a little bit of practice, and you got you the guy in the huddle right before the team went out to talk. That caught my eye because you never seemed to me like the most vocal guy on this team. When did that transition occur that you felt maybe comfortable with that, or were you comfortable doing that? Uh, that's kind of, I'm not really like a vocal leader. I'm kind of like a lead by example. But then what, what comes when you're being at Ohio State, you're put in uncomfortable situations. And when you're in those uncomfortable situations, they they sometimes become comfortable. So that was kind of a range I wasn't used to. But then as I get to do it more, uh, it'll be something that I just become used to. Did you know that it was going to be your turn? Did they just put you on the spot? Did you get a chance to prepare for it? Uh, I probably have five minutes to prepare, <laughs> but I mean, I feel like I did good. All right, but it's, that's starting to become more comfortable then. And yeah. So how important is that when you're talking about this, trying to be a veteran, turn things, get the rushman to turn those pressures into sacks? Like, where, how much of that leadership part is important in bringing that around? I say that that leadership in part is very important because if a, if a guy's having a bad day, you pick him up. Uh, some things are going good. You keep you keep telling them, all right, you're doing this well. Well, we got to fix this so we can get better, even better. You just want to make sure that everyone is on a trending path, and you don't want no man to fall behind and kind of dip down, pick him back up, and let's go. Tyreek said that last year you guys could look at the pressure rate, and it was about what you wanted, but converting them to sacks was not where you guys wanted. How do you how do you turn that into the results that where Coach Dave really wants? I say. Pass rushing more cleaner, uh, fixing up on techniques, uh, flipping hips, bending edges way better, and just having that last burst at the end of your rush to make sure that you're good. What is your weight at right now? 255. How much stronger do you feel than you, when you got here? Because I think you're only like 215 when you came in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel much stronger uh, being when I came in as a freshman trying to play defensive end and setting the edge on like Isaiah Prince. It kind of wasn't good. But then, like where I am now, I can feel that like this is this is where I am, and this is how much stronger I've got. Does it wow you at all when you see guys like Jack and JT come in as developed as they are as freshmen? Uh, it really doesn't wow me because you see all types of people at all different ages, and they could be some are bigger, some are smaller. But then that's just the route you were you were given that you have to take. Everyone has a different style. Speaking of bigger, what have you seen from Dewan at tackle? Yeah. Whatever I seen from Duan, Duan, Duan was really good. I'm not. Uh, he makes me better. Cause being that you have to ra- rush on a bigger tackle, it's a lot. It's a lot more complicated. And me getting that practice, it's I love it. Why is it more complicated? Uh, because you're, you're dealing with a, a bigger individual who can move. You wanted to go back to what Dan was asking you about the weight when you got here and the process. When you started talking to Coach Jay, just go back three or four years. And, did you envision that you could really, you would change this much? And he presents to you, you're going to be a defensive end, and you're going to get to 255 pounds. Like, that's 50 pounds. That's got to be hard to think about if you're 17. Like, yeah, I, I'm not going to, I didn't kind of think it was going to happen. But then uh, they kind of told me, like, look, you have to frame for it. You just have to trust and trust in us. And you have to trust yourself that you can do it. And that's what I did. Did you fight that at all? Like, I can just play outside linebacker. I move well. Why do you want to turn me into this? Uh, I didn't kind of really fight it. I just said, hey, this is what they want me to do, I, so I got to go do it. When did you believe it? When did I believe that I could do it? I'd say after my freshman year, transitioning into my sophomore year that winter. Why? That, uh, working out with Coach Mick a lot and just being with him and him helping shape my mentality more. I was like, yeah, this is this is where I can do it. So Mick shaped shaped your mentality as much as your physical your physical being. Yeah. How did you do that? Uh, just pushing me every day, challenging me. Uh, I, me and Coach Mick are very close, and he would tell me, all right, you got to eat, you got to gain weight, you got to get stronger, and just doing, staying with him, doing extra reps and stuff when I was a young guy. Just him him helping me and molding me into becoming who I am today. How important is it to have people like Coach Jay, like Coach Mick, who believe in you, and then to also trust in them when they give you advice? Uh, you have to, at a certain point, you have to realize, like, this is their job. They, Coach Mick has been around 
plenty of athletes way before me and you've seen the success he has. So then you and you look at yourself and say, hey, if he can do that for them, why can't he do it for me? Like, why can't I do that? So then you realize, like, all right, let's go do it. I say Zach is, he's kind of like a character. He's really funny at some times. Uh, he could be serious when he wants to, but at the end, he's just a fun guy, really, to be around. Yeah, I'd say it's two different people, but then it just shows you that he's gotten comfortable around us, and he's to the point where he feels like he can open up. Zach Harrison? Zach, I feel like Zach hasn't even touched his ceiling. He has so much that he could do. He hasn't touched his ceiling. Like, he, he has no cap. He can, he, I feel like he's a player that will always get better. He finds something to get better at. Has he uh, shared his dad's chili with you? It's one of the things that you're allowed to eat. He hadn't shared his dad's chili. Hey! <laughs> you ain't share your dad's chili with me. Your dad be cooking chili and you ain't share it? <laughs> That's crazy. I did have a red velvet cake. I did have that. But the chili, though. Yeah. Appreciate it. What about your diet? You know, you talk about, you know, he talked about basically being able to be your own What about you and how you, you know, hit that kind of weight that you want to be at? And, and what is Coach Mick done to help you get to it? Uh, I'd say. Coach Mick would tell me, eat any time I can. It doesn't matter. Like, he would tell me, you're not going to get fat. So, what is the point? So, I really just eat a lot. Like, I eat canes late at night, uh, Chipotle during the day. I'll probably go through two gainer mass shakes. And then with the amount of how we work out and how hard we go, you kind of really won't put on any body fat You just because you're going hard. You guys have a lot of veterans on the defensive line. You, Zach, Kyrie. How much do you think that helps you guys to have so many guys with playing experience on the team? Um, I think that helps us a lot because we all know what happens in the game and this could lead us to push each other like, hey, like if we want to be this elite unit, we have to do things this way because we know the exp we've been there and we know what to expect. So we kind of we're kind of like carrying the legacy and making sure that it keeps getting passed. Down and going in the right direction. Teron Vincent? Ooh, Teron Vincent. I say Teron Vincent right now. He's in he's he's in peak performance right now. I feel like I feel like Teron is is in is in some good shape right now and he's looking very good to me. I mean Teron Vincent, he can he can move. For him to be that size. His hips are good. He has a great first step. Larry said that they've been cross-training Haskell and Teron to potentially play together. What do you think that would bring to your defensive line if they're both on the field at the same time? I'd say that could bring a lot of versatility, really, just to have them moving around so you constantly don't know which who's going to be on what side. Right, so you, you don't know who's necessarily the nose tackle, who's the free tackle? Mm-hmm. It can cause confusion. What's uh what's Teron's attitude bring you guys? <laughs> I say Teron's attitude it helps bring some more energy. It, it brings a, a uh, kind of like a little meaner side out of you that you need. It's that little edge you need in football. He makes you meaner. Yeah. How do you do that? I mean, it's just him. It's who he is. I can't I can't really explain. It. It's just being around him and knowing him. Yeah, I, I'd say how because he pushes you in that like he's he's a, a happy guy, but he pushes you in the direction like, hey, come on, like we gotta we gotta be more physical, like you gotta go play harder. So then that that shit that turns on a chip on the other edge, like let's go. Hmm? No. Yeah, I mean, recently.